Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode six of Spit and Chicklets at Barstool Sports. And who is the scariest guy he ever played against? All right, Hamilton. Hmm. Good question. That's a really good With question. George Rock, who just naturally, like, you just think of when I when I think of toughness in fighting because he was such a killer. Eric Goddard I played with. That's a name that he, that guy would stand toe-to-toe with anyone. Steve McIntyre. Steve McIntyre, actually, I played with. I don't know if a lot of people know his name. He didn't play very long in the NHL. Yeah, I remember. This guy was a legit refrigerator. He would just punch people's head in. He was a killer. And apparently, like, like I made fun of him in practice a couple times. Like, I, I granted, I used to bust his balls a little bit when he'd make horrible plays. But he despises me now wants me dead and i know that because i played when i got sent down by uh the panthers i played for san antonio my first ahl game was against the oklahoma city barons who was the oilers farm team at the time now they're in bakersfield and steve mcintyre was on the team i'm skating around in warm-ups i'm in shock that i'm back in the ahl i'm so rattled i can't believe it's it, by the way, this is an 11 a.m. game. A, it was a game for kids at schools to come to. So it was just packed with, like, you know, fifth and sixth graders. They were listening to SpongeBob SquarePants during warm-ups. I was like, this, how, how quickly has my career fallen into the shitter? <laughs> and all of a sudden, Steve McIntyre is no. at the red line telling me, I'm going to fucking kill you, Whitney, you little prick. You're fucking dead. I'm like, oh, my God, what the fuck am I going to do? So the whole game, I would skate by the bench. He'd be chawing at the bit to get, get on the ice. He was going ki- to kill me. I think he was going to swing his stick at my head. And, uh, and, and then he would get on the ice, and I would just full sprint back to the bench and change. And the coach, Tom Rose, now the GM of the Panthers, was like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, that guy's going to kill me. I am not staying on the ice. No chance. So anytime he got on the ice, I was changing. You know, basically, that just shows how petrified I was of him. So he was a tough bastard. Yeah, last, um, that stage of the career, last thing you needed was to get a fucking conky. It wouldn't have been a conky. It would have been just a death. Like, <laughs> there was this guy. I mean, I used to make fun of him for, like, missing the net. And, like, he couldn't really lift the puck when he took slap shots. But, I mean, I didn't think it had scarred him like this. Oh, yeah. and then at the end of the year, season party, he was singing karaoke. He was singing awful country karaoke. And I was like, shut up. Give the mic to somebody you else, break. and I think that's when it really kind of hit him that he wanted to be dead. Listening to that podcast, it was quite comical. <laughs> he made me sound like I was a Neanderthal. It's hilarious. Like, I'll be honest with you. Um, <laughs> not, you know, I, this whole story kind of started very, from the very first time I met him. And, uh, you know, I... I we kind of rubbed each other from the start. He's a he's a you know um, a city kid, which is fine. I don't have any problem. He's from Boston. I got some great some of my best friends are from Boston. Mr. V, Paul Vincent, um, who actually told me about Wit. So you know I might have had a preconceived notion of Wit, but I mean if you can picture this Boston boy in. Northern Alberta, it just, I mean, you know, it's just, it doesn't really, it doesn't really fit the picture, you know what I mean? I mean it's just different to, if they, you know, he, he would always kind of poke fun at me about, uh, you know, being a cowboy from, from Saskatchewan, and, and I was always into hunting and fish, or hunting at that time, and, you know, shooting and, you know, guns and horses, and, you know, I was living the dream, and, and you know, we had a really good deal, deal with the dealership, and, I got to drive uh, Ford trucks at the time, you know, four wheelers out. Some of these guys are like they've never been anywhere, never rode a four wheeler, never rode a you know snowmobile, never gone hunt, never shot a gun. And Wits over there kind of poking fun at me. And I'm like, hey, you know, anytime you want to go, I'll take you. We kind of rubbed each other a little bit through the course of the year, and we had a few times we had some words. And uh, you know, just you know, Wit being Wit and me being who I was, I wasn't going to take it. Wit knew by the end of the season. So, uh, year end party comes. So, we're having a party. You know, we're at a restaurant or whatever. And, well, they got karaoke. Well, I am I like karaoke. So, I get out there and I'm singing my, I mean, I'm just singing. And, you know, he is, at, I mean, he's just at me. And, uh, like I said, that was kind of the straw that broke down with back. But, 
anyway, it was because of my singing that, uh, you know, we kind of had some bad blood. And I'm just going to leave it at that, but not even bad blood. And like I said, it's, 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 it's over and done with. And I kind of laugh and joke about it. But, you know, the next year he was playing in, I want to say he was playing in San Antonio. And I was in Oklahoma City with the Barons. And uh, first game, I told him, I said, I was going to break his F and, you know, at that time, his, his legs and, you know, he'd never play hockey ever again. And the meanwhile, he's like literally like, get me off the ice. <laughs> but the, whole, the whole game, I'm just screaming at him. And, you know, not too many, not too many times I do that. But I knew if I stayed on wit, you know, he'd be in the box. And he was, he was a good player. Like, he, you know, uh, he was a good player when he wanted to be, and, and, and you know, he was talented. But if you kept on him, he would fold his tent, and he would, you know. So I, that was kind of my motive. Would you have ran him over? Or would, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And that's the thing. I never, ever tried to hurt anybody, but I always tried to play hard. If you were fighting, I wanted to hurt you so that you did not want to ever fight me again. That was That was my... You know, I wanted to hit you so hard that you didn't that you didn't want to ever fight me again. 